Yeah, I took it off. I mean, I don't need all that extra wire in there anyway, so I want enough wire to where I can work on it comfortably. But I don't want so much wire that I got to start worrying about wire tying it all up and wrapping it all up and and doing all that. So wire strippers. You know, a lot of guys can't use these. The trick is putting your finger in there, putting your pinky finger in there, and that kind of helps it so you don't cut too deep and you can feel the cut you know with these I can strip a wire if I wanted to or cut the wire you know if I'm using a pair of those those other wire strippers that you have to put it in the right hole for the right no they're just not the way to go I mean this here makes it so much easier you just you know give it a little tip my fingers underneath it so I'm showing you here and you just pull it off there it is yeah no big deal uh, it's so much easier once you actually get to use it, you know, there's so much easier than to You know looking for the one with the right hole with the right size wire and, and then picking the wrong wire and finding the right It's just a pain in the ass this year You know you can I've actually Gone up to a number four on this, but you kind of got to work it around a little bit, but you can it's not a big deal So I'll probably uh, I should have tint these wires first, but uh, I'll probably um just let it run through like that. I may put a little solder on it later. I should have done it now, but you know what? These crimps are pretty good. Good crimp tool too. Those other ones are a pain in the ass. You guys know what I'm talking about. Now I got a good waterproof fuse here if I need it. So I'll keep that for something else because this is going to be fused here. So I don't have to worry about it. So that's done, that's done. Now I got to do this one. So, let's take a blue, a blue, a blue, a blue, a blue. Come on. Yeah, come on, get out of there. You know, I should organize all these. And at one time I had them all organized. And then I don't know what happened. You know, it would save time. But it takes up a lot more room too, because then I have to have all these little individual drawers, um, you know, to do things with. And sometimes it's just a pain in the ass. It's not worth it. They're all there. I know where they are. Screw it. Yeah. Actually, I got to order some more because I'm running short on the blues and reds. Uh, I've got a lot of large yellows, but. Uh, I need some blues and reds. I've got them in the uh, the heat shrink ones, you know, but that's the other ones. And I'm running low on some of the brass. Uh, where am I? The brass. Because, um, you know, I've got a lot of the, the big stuff left. But I don't have any, uh, I have very few of the small stuff. Meaning the smaller wire as well as the smaller hole. Um, you know, uh, this will work for some, but... I'm going to low on this too, so I'm probably going to have to put an order in, you know. I used to get this stuff from a place in California, which was uh, really decent on prices. However, uh, the shipping is starting to get a little out of hand. Um, so I don't know, I may start looking closer. But, um, you know, I usually buy a hundred or so at a time. Well, the other stuff, I'll buy these in thousand lots. But the, the brass stuff, you know, uh, I'll buy a few hundred, but there'll be like, you know, 50 of one size, 50 of another size, that type of thing. Because they're good to have around. Now, I'm looking for, what am I looking for here? I am, Oh, I know what I'm looking for. I am looking for a yellow blade. Here we go. I'd rather have a blue blade for this one. Do I have a blue blade? I should have in here. I know I got a lot of different sizes. Blue blade. Okay. So anyway, guys, what's going on out there in the real world? You guys getting ready for uh, summer? Right. I know it's starting to get hot here. Oh, the other day, by the way, I went to a Home Depot yesterday because I had that ceiling paint. Now I know when it comes to ceilings, I normally just buy an inexpensive white wall paint because the wall paints are a little bit more durable. All right, the ceiling paints are really, they're okay, they're nice, they're white, but you really got to pay attention because some of them are like 
transparent almost. You know, it's almost like you paint, but if the if there was any types of markings or something that you're trying to get over where a normal paint may have done it, the sealant paint is just like a, like a white stain. You know, you're whitewashing. Well, the Bears, as a rule, I like Bears paint. I like Pittsburgh best. All right, there used to be a paint called Oxford, but it was great. Uh, Benjamin Moore is okay. Uh, I'm not crazy about their latexes. Um, but I found the Bears paint actually is decent paint, and I was surprised. So, uh, my, my kid used to use it a lot, and I, you know, I used it some, but my kid used it a lot, and he had a, uh, a remodeling firm going for a while, but um, Bears paint. So I bought six gallons, two gallon buckets, three of them, of ceiling paint. The other day, I had somebody down here help me paint ceilings. And I'm telling you, something that would have taken a couple hours took six hours because we had to go wait for it to dry and go back and do it again and then do it again. Now, the ceilings weren't that bad a shape because I just painted them like four years ago. You know, and, and they were clean. You know, nobody now smokes. You know, I mean, so there's no reason for these ceilings to be polluted. You know, we have gas heat, you know, well, hot air, but still, you know, that, that it's well maintained. So it's not burning rich, you know, so we haven't... There's no reason for the ceilings to have been dirty, all right, which they weren't, all right, uh, so that the paint wouldn't work, um, but the paint didn't want to work. So I took back the two two-gallon buckets that were untouched um, because I, I said, you know what, whatever ceilings we got done, let's finish them, and I'm done. I'm not going to use this paint and go nuts with it anymore. So I went back to Home Depot yesterday, and I met up with a friend of mine that works down there, Mike, and I also know the Bears rep which wasn't there and uh, when I was talking to Mike you know to, to get a refund um, I didn't have my receipt or anything but luckily you know like I say I know the guy and it wasn't a big deal um, but the good side of the coin is is that I may end up with five gallons of exterior house paint all right which is going to uh, if I was to purchase it cost about 275 bucks uh, for a five gallon bucket and I'm probably going to get one of those for zero all right um, I was going to do some touch up on the house but I noticed that even though it's not peeling uh, it, it just looks tired so seeing that we're going to you know be selling the house you know you want it to look its best um, so well, like I say I was just going to do some touch up here and there and you know maybe just face off the front um, but like I say, you know, it, it just looks tired. It's not peeling. It's not a mess. It just looks tired. So, uh, it, you know, it lost its luster, you know. So, uh, I'm going to repaint the house next, not this Friday, but next Friday, the 16th. I have uh, a person coming out to give me a hand with that. Um, so, we shouldn't have any problems and take it from there. I was going to start it tomorrow, which is... Uh, no, tomorrow's Wednesday, right? Yeah, today's Tuesday. Yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. I don't keep track of days, guys. Um, so Thursday, I was going to start it Thursday, right? you know, and, and just kind of power wash it down and, and, you know, let it dry for a few days, that type of thing. And then, so now, use. Now, I got a couple of train of thoughts here. Uh... I'm going to run a main fuse, which will probably be maybe a 40 or a 50 amp monster type fuse, either one of these or one of those. Um, and then naturally the fuses for each unit. Now I got to look in the book because I want to find out what they actually are. Um, I believe the VHF one, the marine radio one, I have a fuse right here, and it looks like a, it looks like a 5 amp, but, 6, alright, so that takes care of that side, so I can put a, uh, well, they don't have these in 6, so I can either put a 5 or a 10, um, if I make it too light, and I get long-winded, or I have a, a weak antenna system, I can blow it. If I make it too heavy, a 7.5. There we go. That's perfect. 
Okay. 7.5 is going to go to the marine radio, so that's going to go right in there. Now, for the uh, CV. CV is just basic sta <coughs> standard, so even a 7.5 on that one, if I can find one, would be great. 4 to 5 would work just fine, but 7.5, I can deal with it. I just don't want to put anything super big. If I have a shortener radio, I don't, it, I don't care. If it's a shortener radio, it's going to go, it's going to go. Um, but if I have a short between it, I want to make sure it pops the fuse. And between a 5 and a 7, it doesn't make too much of a difference. You know, if I got to fix the polarity protector, which is just a, basically a diode, uh, it'll take me 5 minutes. It'll take me longer to get the radio out than it would be for me to fix it. Uh, even without equipment, I don't have to worry about it. Well, I have one in my hand right here. Oh, here we go. Okay, that takes care of that one. All right. Now for the, uh, well, that's that one. That don't go there. That goes over here. There you go. Now, for the next one, the high power. I'm not going to go monster big. Three, no. Again, you think I would sort these out? Nah, that makes life too easy. The hell is that one? That's a five. 30, I don't want a 30. I don't want a three. You know, one time they used to have these colored, coded. You know, but now a 30 and a 3 is the same color. You know, I mean, come on. You know, what's wrong with this picture? Oh, here's a 20, which is also the same color. Base. Well, it's a little off, okay. So it was supposed to be yellow, I guess. But, all right. My mistake on that one. But now what I'm looking for, I can't find. I'm looking at, wait a minute. Did I find one? Did I find one? No, nope, that's a 30. So anyway, guys, we're getting there. I ordered a new power supply so that I can actually have 12 volts in here. Uh, it runs from 12, it's adjustable from actually 9 up to 15. Um, I like to run everything at around 13.4, 13 13.6, 13 because most of the time that's what's going on in your vehicle. You have a 12 volt battery in there, yes, but most of the time your car is running a little bit hotter than that. So. Uh, Anyway, I ordered a power supply. I was hoping it would come in today because I wanted to be able to work on the radio here uh, before I put it in the vehicle. Here we go. Before I put it in the vehicle, uh, just to make sure that everything is functioning properly. Now, I did put a battery charger on my big D8 out back, uh, which was hooked up to the solar at one time, um, which is no longer. So that'll give me something in here, and it's going through a battery, and it's probably 70 feet away. Uh, so I shouldn't pick up too much noise, you know, from the uh, from the system. So that should be okay. Uh, the wire that's coming in, by the way, you know, because I talk a lot about line loss. Well, for instance, if a radio comes with 10 feet. That's a lot, but if it came with 10 feet, well, I'll show you. The ham radio came with this here, all right? Now, this is about 10 or 12 feet of wire. If I had to add to this, the first thing I would do was I would only add to the red side. I ground it as close to the radio as possible, you know, well, right to the chassis somehow. I wouldn't want to run all this ground wire. But if I had to add more wire to this, I would want to add heavier wire. Not the same size, not any thinner, heavier. Because you end up with a line loss. It'll see the voltage for a while, but it's not going to see the amperage. And then that's going to end up blowing up your radio because your radio is going to start running hot. So when you have to lengthen wire, I, go heavier. That's all there is to it, you know. Um, if you gotta go 
you know, like three gauges heavier because that's all you have, well then that's what you do. You follow me? You don't go thinner. Alright? And you don't want to mix. Because you may want to say, well, okay, I need more wire, so I'll take some of the black and add it to the red. Well, you may know, and you may even put some red tape on the end of it, so you'll know that it's hot because you've added the two colors, or vice versa. But you know what? Somebody working on your car down the line may not know. So always keep your color codes the same. All right? You know, it's not worth the aggravation. All right, sometimes, you know, like I, for instance, now here, okay, here's something. If you're out in the country, you know, and you're miles from any place and you need something, well, it's, it's, it's a tough one to call because then it's like a shame on you. But if you haven't got the funds to keep a small supply of things around, uh, well, that's another story. But then again, if I got to travel for an hour to get something that costs, you know, four or five bucks, and it cost me 15 bucks in fuel and time. Well, you know what? I could have spent $10 and had a few extra pieces laying around. We were, uh, here's an example. We were looking at a home in Georgia at one time. And it was a nice little community. We liked it. You know, it was nearby a hospital. You know, a decent size, decent ratings. It was next to a nice shopping area. Uh, but yet it was secluded. The closest Home Depot was 62 miles away. Now, if I had to go to Home Depot, I'd make sure that I had enough crap laying around from that place that I bought extras so I didn't have to keep driving for three hours or longer. That's almost a day trip. By the time you get there, do what you have to do and then come back again. That's almost a day trip. You know, and it wouldn't be worth it to me to go out there to have to pick up one or two plugs or sockets or gaskets or, you know, uh, faucets dripping or whatever. I'd have a small Home Depot in my house, right, or in my workshop. But when it comes to that, you want to double. Double would be a fair way of bone. If you had to add it, if you're not sure what, the, what, the, what to do, just double the thickness, all right? That's all. Um, but, again, you don't want to make it smaller. And just because it came with that size, that size is matched for that length. And if you start running over, you're going to start having problems. Believe me, you are going to have problems. All right, All right I'm done for now.